truth to reign on the earth. That's right. It says, uh, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, mm -hmm. then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee. And that's, that's all that you're seeing right now. It's, it's earthquakes, uproar, wars, rumors of wars. That's all that's going on. So that's, it's easy for us to, to break these things down because it's clearly in our face. Exactly. And we're not hypnotized by the gold and the lights of this society. We can see right through the, the, the hypnotic spell that they're trying to put on by putting these basketball games on, on TV, by putting these the Super Bowl. You people are hypnotized. You're totally trapped into what they want you to be trapped in. Same thing with these churches. You go to these churches and you feel this feeling of euphoria when the pastor talks. But that's all, that's all a, a, a lot. That's all a lot. You don't, you're, what you're feeling is a little, is a little good time spirit. And that's going, as soon as you walk out that door, it's going to go away. That's why you, you need that fix. You got to come back next Sunday. And the pastor, he ain't doing that, but he's, he's like a magician. He ain't doing that, but understanding what you need to go through. You're broke. You, you, you can't pay your bills. So that's what he makes a sermon about. It's funny you mention it's a fix because you niggas got to pay for a fix. Like you go to a dope dealer for that, that rock or for that weed or whatever drug that you use to get your little fix to basically take your mind out of, out of that uh, crazy state that you're in. It's no different from going to these churches and giving your money to these pastors to speak lies to you, man. And, and give you that illusion that everything's going to be all right. When you live in reality in a world that's crumbling before your eyes, man. Your whole situation, everything that you know that's supposed to be good in your life is falling apart. But you got some nigga just because you see him uh, driving the, the church in a damn Benz. He going home in a, in a big ass five uh, uh, room mansion. You thinking that uh, somehow that's going to come to you. You know? But that's not for you. That's for him. That's for the magician. Yep. That's for the sorcerer to have. And how does the sorcerer continue to live like that? By keeping you under his spell. Exactly. <laughs> That's how it works. You come in there, it's just like um, uh, a cult. And you've seen him in cults. Jim Jones or not? Is it Jim Jones? Jim Jones is a rapper. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, Jim Jones was a cult. It's David a cult. Koresh. David Koresh and all of them. You get them to come in there, and they'll do things like turn to your neighbor and tell them this and that. No. What he's getting you is to fall under his spell. Enchantment, now you're doing exactly what he wants you to do. So you in there, you you just totally enthralled into what he's saying. But when you think about it, he ain't never telling you to do anything other than serve him. He's not bringing you closer to the Most High, because if you've been in there for 30 years, you would have had some kind of spiritual growth. Yep. But you just wax worse and worse and worse to the point where you don't even go home and open your Bible. You just go to him. You just go in there and go to the source. Exactly. And you listen to the sorcerer, he conjures up a spell, and then you leave. You feel that good time spirit for a few minutes, a day, and then, ah, I need to get back up there. When in the book of Acts, you had Simon the sorcerer, Simon the magi. And when you look into that word sorcerer, I believe it goes back to uh, Pharmakia. Pharmakia. Pharmakia, yeah. right? So that's what Simon was doing. He was in, 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 enchanting the people using potions, using those, 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 uh, uh, those, like, the, the, what, it's those enticing words that the preachers use now, those enticing speeches to let you feel like you can make it. So you walk out like, you know what, I can be rich. I can. I have a shot at it, You yo. know what? I can have me a G5 jet too. All I gotta do is believe in this dude. All I gotta do is just keep doing it. It's witchcraft, man. Mm-hmm. You wax worse and worse whenever you got it. Go ahead. It's uh, Acts chapter 8, uh, still at verse 9. And this is talking about uh, Simon the Magi right here. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. And he read uh, maybe two verses of them so they know what, what was going on at that time. Uh, verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Yahweh's them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. So Philip was speaking the truth. He didn't need no potion. He didn't need you to come to the back room 
and I need you to take two sips of this, two sips of that, wait 10 minutes, and then take all the sips together. He didn't need you to do none of that. He had the spirit of the most high. There is no tricks. It's just pure truth being, being spoken to earth. And that pure truth was healing people. Just like it's going, what's going on now. You got brothers doing lessons on food, doing lessons on what, to, what not to eat, what to eat. And these people are moving away from that lifestyle and they're being healed. It's the same thing that was going on then. Go ahead. Uh, uh, hearing and seeing the miracles, which he did, mm -hmm. for unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And this was all done without no damn in enchanting speeches. Philip, Philip was probably out there cursing cats out, screaming at cats, getting cats right. Because that's what it takes with these knuckleheaded people that are on this side. Yep. It takes harsh words. It takes a, a, a manly spirit. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city. That's Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes. That's all of them. <coughs> they were out there preaching, but they weren't preaching in, in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. They were preaching in the spirit of Satan to try to just get the people enthralled so that they can have them do what he wanted them to do. Not what the most I wanted them to do, but what he wanted them to do. So the people are looking at Simon like he's a Oh, high and great Simon. Go ahead. Which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. And he was probably using different potions, different flowers, mushrooms, got people in hypnotic states. And then he's giving them this, this mushroom. They not knowing what it is. They eat it. And they going through all these crazy things in their mind as he's sitting there talking to them. Forming ideas and thoughts in their mind. So now they're in, they're thinking that he's the most high. Go ahead. Uh, giving out that himself was some great one, mm -hmm. to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest. And that, that's not only these these uh underhanded preachers, that's a so-called white man. He's he's beautiful with his wickedly beautiful with his sorcery as far as medicine. It's, it's wonders that he's done with these with these medicines. You got a headache, take half of this pill, headache's gone. Got CVS right across mm -hmm. the street right there, you know? That's Pharmacaea right there. That's right there, man. That's a, those, those men in the white, the women with the white jackets, those are sorcerers. Those are magicians. Witches. Witches. Designed to <laughs> keep your ass enthralled and enchanted into this place. So when you're sick, you don't turn to the Most High. Who do you turn to? That local witch doctor. You driving downtown to CVS, bowling up in a blanket. Don't know what's going on. But he's so good now that not only does he have the cures, but he's cultivated the disease. So he can take the disease, spray the disease in a parking garage. Now he's got all the people in this apartment sick. So now this CVS is making all kind of money. Off of cough medicine, off of this, off of that. Yeah, I watch respect to That's what a magician would do. That's what a sorcerer would do. Go ahead. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. That's right. Because he was using, most likely using mushrooms, flowers, different liquids that'll have you just hypnotized, not knowing what's going on. He might slip it in your water. He might slip, slip in a sandwich. Hey, I got a sandwich for you. Sandwich laced with mushrooms. Now he's sitting over you, telling you all kind of madness. But that's these Baptist, Baptist church as well. You come in there week and week in and week out, getting hypnotized by what he's talking about. You're hypnotized into the reaping your harvest doctrine. Now instead of paying your damn life bill, you done bought T.D. Jake's new books. Seventy-five dollars a pop. No good will you can't afford that madness. Now you done bought your grandmother the whole catalog of uh, Tyler Perry movies. So, prayer cloths. Prayer cloths hanging from the ceiling fan, dipped in some white man's holy water. You bought on online at three o'clock in the morning. 
Yo, but meanwhile, he's telling you just to have faith. I mean, your whole situation is deteriorating because you're trying to buy into his spell, man. You know, but at the same time, he's not actually building you up and teaching you to go into this word for yourself and, and, and be built up, man. You know, they want to administer it to you, and that's what a drug dealer does. They administer yep. drugs to you, yep. you know? They stand on the corner, they make themselves available 24-7 yep. so that they can keep you enthralled into their situation. Not only do they stand on the corner, but now they're in music videos with the cars and the chains because that's what they have to do. That's what Satan has to do to keep you going. But that's not what the Howard Chanel Shah has to do. Right. His truth comes out, and when, like the scriptures say, when, it, when his sheep hear his words, they follow. They don't need, the Lord don't need no potion. The Lord don't need us up here with gold chains, driving Lamborghinis. The Lord don't need that. He's trying to raise up a few good men, and at that point, he's going to take them, them few good men and totally annihilate this place. Excuse me. You want to get out of I got it. Go ahead. Yeah, this is just basically going into these false pastors because like the brothers going into, they're nothing but witches at the end of the day. And if you niggas would just open up your Bible, man, you would see that that's wickedness according to the Most High. This is how they, they are supposed to be dealt with. This is Exodus 22 and 18. Thou shalt not suffer a wish to live. That's right. So them niggas need to be put to death, man, because a nigga in the church will try to act holier than now and talk about uh, somebody that's dealing drugs in the community. But what about your pastor, man? He, he's dealing the, the worst drug ever, man. Deceit, lies, false and vain doctors, man, that got you going away from the ways of the Heavenly Father, man. That's right. I was on YouTube and I was watching, somebody was doing a video about Illuminati music or something like that. And you had one of the favorite leaders of the black community. Uh, Farrakhan. And guess who he's talking to and trying to uplift? Young Thug. <laughs> he's talking to Young Thug like Young Thug is some young spiritual man that he sees some, I see great works in you. Young Thug is, is, is a complete witchcraft right there. Young Sodomite, man. Complete witchcraft. He's trying to take the young man's mind and focus it toward homosexuality. Yep being transgender, being a lesbian, being anything other than what you are. You're a man, therefore you should act like a man. Yep. He ne you never hear him talking like that. You see him in a skirt, a leopard print skirt. You see him with his friends around him. They got skirts on. There was a video, I think it was on Worldstar, where they had one of his friends in the studio, and they had a homosexual porno, porno movie going in the back. Mm -hmm. That's all geared to trap you people up. That's sorcery. But the Most High don't need that sorcery. Right. Most High don't need us doing BS like that. All we do gotta do is come out here and preach His word. It. It's an easy and a light thing that we have to do. Imagine them niggas being young thug, all the wickedness he gotta do to stay relevant in the Illuminati or in whatever Masonic order he's in, all that madness he gotta do. Yep. All them people he probably gotta do ungodly acts with. We don't have to do that. All we got to do is preach his word. Watch the videos. Read. That's all we got to do. And live our lives according to the videos that we watch. According to the books that we read. Understand the history. Break down the history. That's all we got to do. We ain't got to be nowhere on no goddamn nasty ass movie set. We ain't got to do all that madness. Traveling all over the world. Trying to push this madness. Doing good and well, you don't want to wear no skirt. Go ahead. You got no, that was it on that one. All right, back in Acts chapter 8, verse 11. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched him with sorcerers. Mm -hmm. The sorcerers with potions, with enticing speeches, having people in that euphoric state. Now I can make it, man. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. They, even now in the, in the church, they teach that thing, that law of attraction thing. Yeah. You print out your favorite car. Oh, you put it on the refrigerator and you put a magnet on it. Yes. And all you gotta do is think about it. And the Lord gonna give it to you. That's the same thing Simon the Magi was, was speaking. 
about I'm claiming. I'm claiming it this I'm year. Claim, I'm claiming this year. <laughs> you looking at your old lady? Yeah. Man, we're gonna get that whip. Yeah. <laughs> but not only do you not get the car you want, you lose the one you got. Yeah, that's right. While this nigga's flying 30,000 feet in the air <laughs> with Lil Wayne, <laughs> laughing about the speech that he just preached to you. And they're laughing because the same sermon that he was preaching in church, Lil Wayne had in his song. You just didn't catch it. They saying the same thing to me. I say this, on the flip side of that, some of them may ask you to get that car. But you know what? It's a stumbling block. Because most of don't want you to actually understand the truth. So you, you got you thinking that he's on your team, got shit on the trick bag with a so-called white man, and you gonna die anyway. Cause you right. receive your consolation this side. So either way it go, two girls are people, they fuck. That's right, that's a great point. Some of you niggas might actually get what's what you got on the refrigerator. Life ain't gonna do nothing but fall worse and worse. Yep. Like the brother said, go ahead. Uh, uh, verse 12. But when they believe, but when they believe Peter, uh, Slack and Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of Yahweh and the name of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, they were baptized both men and women. Mm -hmm. Then Simon and so when they heard that truth, they said, well, wait a minute. We ain't got to take no potion. We ain't got to take no pills. We ain't got to be in here worrying about what we don't have. All we got to do is be content with what we have and understand the truth. That's all we have to do. That's a much easier life. So they said, you know what? We rolling with the truth. And Philip baptized him in that truth. Then Simon himself believed also. Mm -hmm. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So even the magician himself said, damn, the spirit is real. The truth is real. They got it. But he's he was still concerned about himself and being uplifted and being the man. He couldn't shake that off. Go ahead and continue. Uh, verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of Yahweh, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. That's right. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, mm -hmm. saying, Give me also this power. That's that, that that's he had that pride in him that he couldn't put away. Because through his sorceries and through his lies, he had become that great dude. So he was only looking to be that great dude. He wasn't looking to save the people, to pull the people out of the fire of wickedness. <coughs> that he was the one that put them in there. Yep. He wasn't looking, he was looking to make him, to lift himself up again, to be the man. He said, man, he said, man if I get this power, I'm mm -hmm. kill him. Ooh, See, but he saw, he, saw it, he saw it in truth. Trying to get that bread. Simon was at the house. He got to keep ordering potions. He got to keep going out of town, pick up this potion, keep going down to Jerusalem to get it mixed. Then he got to bring it back yep. to Samaria. Just like a nigga, man. He was. He had to do all that work. But now he saw that he saw the apostles, and they just came and they just laid I need hands to get with him. And he was like, man, that's what it is right there. That's easy. Need that connect. That's the real deal right there. Now that's magic right there. But guess what happened when they when, when he did that? Go ahead. Uh, uh, saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. He wasn't concerned about the people. He wasn't concerned about the truth. He wasn't concerned about the spirit of Yahweh Shai being in, on the earth in truth. He was concerned about lifting himself up and being the man again. It's like he just saying, okay, now I just don't have to order all these potions. I don't have to... Con Conjure up all these speeches. I can just do what they do. I can just go over there, you're healed. That's what he wanted. He wanted to be the man still. But it don't work like that. If you ain't got the spirit on you, then you ain't got it. You're gonna have to continue in them potions. Verse 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, mm -hmm. because thou hast thought that the gift of Yahweh may be purchased with money. That's right. He Simon ain't got it. Simon ain't got it. These, these preachers out in these churches, they ain't got it. All these enticing speeches, this euphoric feeling that they give you, 
All of that stuff is madness, wickedness. There's no truth in that stuff. There's no substance in, in anything that they talked about. There's no truth in anything that they're talking about. Go into one of these churches and ask them, with just a simple scripture, what about Deuteronomy 